mentioning about some psychological testing that psychologists do, right? Yeah. What what kind of uh, tests do you all do? Uh, many different kinds. So we uh, there's the learning um, issues, learning disorders, where we do the testing. We also do like the neurological, psychological testings. Uh, we also do like career testings. Yeah. So many different sort of testings for different population. Yeah. So you mentioned something about a career testing. What does that entail? Um, okay. So first of all, you want to know your personality. Okay, and what suits your personality? That's something everybody is very curious about. What is suitable for me? But what is suitable for me? Then we need to know who are you. <laughs> so the Maya Briggs or the MBTI that many people are very familiar with now uh, provides that framework to find out a little bit more about the person. And here we do the strong interest inventory. So what you are interested in. But of course, if you, you do a quick search, right, you will see many different sort of surveys and tests that are available. So what's the difference between someone coming to you to do the test versus doing it online? <laughs> okay, when we do anything and when we read anything, we look at it from our perspective and our understanding. So what happens is, when we do an online test, any sort of online test, right, we will read that page right at the end and say, you are this and you have all these qualities. You go, that sounds like me or that doesn't sound like me. You would either buy into it or resist, resist it or reject it even, right? And then it stops there. You don't know what to do with those pieces of information and how you can apply it to your own life. So what we will do is we then look at the analysis. So the more tests we do, the more um, we can analyze across the different tests. And then we present it to you and say, based on all these, these are several things that you need to look out for how you can use it, where you can use it, you know, what, uh, what are your strengths, what are your limitations, and how your strength can help your limitations. Yeah, so it's more robust and more dynamic, the whole process. Have you, has anyone ever gotten a job or got fired from a job because they went through this test? Um, well, the, it's not this test per se because this is more exploratory. Uh, I guess what you're talking about is sometimes the leadership testing. <laughs> so those are really stressful even for us. So you think that the ones that are taking it are stressed. Sorry, it's the ones that administer it and have to write the report and then make that decision that are more stressed, you know, because somebody's livelihood is on the line. So sometimes uh, organizations will come and say, we have this panel of um, people or a few people that are slated for promotion. We want to see who's most suitable for this job. And then we will administer the test and it's really a pass fail sort of thing. It's very, very scary. It's so stressful. It's stressful because we need to justify why one person is more suitable. What are the personality traits that are more suitable for this? Their uh, ability sets that are suitable for the leadership position, which is not perhaps just grassroots level anymore. It is management, it is trying to coordinate things, it is organizing, planning, uh, strategizing. So not everybody have those skill set, but they, for them, they feel that they are competent in the job. <laughs> yeah, so it, it is tough. So besides talking about uh, psychological testing for adults, right, do you do psychological testing for children? Yep. Like I say, they come for learning issues, right? So what are some of the learning issues? Your dyslexia, your ADHD, um, central auditory processing disorder. So all these different tests uh, would show up as difficulties in school. And when they have difficulties in school, our Singaporean parents very kanchong. <laughs> so they'll say, my child has a problem. If my child has a problem, please figure out the problem. What is the problem? So they will come and we'll do the whole battery of tests, from your IQ test to your achievement test to your attentional test. And the poor kid will have to sit with us for either a day or a few days. <laughs> Yeah, so after that, they will get a report which would then be used for the, the different therapists who would help them with their um, treatment process. 
end for the schools, you know, uh, what the teachers can do as well as um, MOE, whether they have exam accesses or not, like extra timing, you know, prompter. Um, so they, they have help and resources based on the report itself. Yeah, so actually my sister, she does have dyslexia ah, and then okay. um, the, we kind of found out in primary school when she had a little bit of difficulty uh, learning in school mm, and then my mm. parents brought her over to I'm not sure where she went but then mm. she, she had a test mm. to realise that she was dyslexic mm. and then she even went to a special school right to, mm. to um, kind of uh, I guess she talked to some psychologists to learn more about how she can deal with her dyslexia I will try and correct that a little bit I think it's a special centre with therapists and not a special school because parents are always very worried when they have to send their children to special school now just a heads up right not all the ADHD or dyslexia and all the other learning issues would push you into a special needs school so a special needs school is very very different yeah so they still can go to a mainstream school for the parents that are out there <laughs> who are worried about this question. Yeah. Um, I apologise because she did <laughs> continue to study in a regular school yeah. and then uh, she did get exam exemptions so she got ah. extra time for some of her exams. Wonderful. Yeah, mm. she's all good now. <laughs> Yay!